Alright, sige. Let's do this. Maying gabi sa tanan. Magand, uh, magandang gabi sa lahat. We have another session tonight with Robbie Samson. And the topic is about um, finding the best mutual funds for you. So for the past three sessions, just for just for a quick recap, no, um, napag-usapan natin is about, the first session was about how earnings affect stock prices and our investment decisions. Ito yung napag-usapan natin ng earnings per share, yung price to earnings ratio, yung price to books ratio, price to book value, yun na mga bagay. And then the, se the second session naman was about value investing. No? So like investing for the long term. So paano ba natin yung gawin? And then how do we spot if mababa na ba yung presyo uh, for us to say na sulit na to or like uh, it is selling at a, at a bargain price. So ito naman, it's about mutual funds, ang ating pag-usapan uh, ngayong gabi. So if you want to join the call guys, kung hindi kayo mahiya, you can just uh, click the link na sa description. Pero kung hindi naman, you can just go through the Facebook Live session. Okay? Sige. So I'll give the floor again to uh, Mr. Robbie Samson. Sige, boss. Larga. Okay, boss. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, guys. No, so, so hello once again and welcome to our uh, fourth and final session for, for this series. No? So tonight, we'll be, we're going to talk about mutual funds. Uh, and uh, this is going to be a bit different from before because this is going to be much simpler in concept. And this is going to be geared more towards uh, people or investors who are long-term or who are busy with their work, with their business or whatever, uh, who don't necessarily have the time to, to monitor the stock market. This is going to be perfect for you. So uh, I guess uh, let's begin. No? So let me just pull up my... Let me just pull up my slides. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. There we go. So uh, this is uh, entitled it uh, Fund Smart One Hundred One. So discover how you can diver diversify your investments. And uh, basically, the um, core message natin this evening, or the core message of any mutual fund, to to be to be fair, is it allows you to diversify. Now I'm sure we're all familiar with this uh, popular saying, no, don't put all your financial eggs into one basket. So this is very very true in the world of investments. Uh mahirap kung masyado kang magiging uh, overly bullish or overly overweight sa isang type of asset class. You need to be able to balance them out. Pero ang importante doon when you do balance your investments out you need to make sure that you understand kung ano pa din yung investments na yun. No? And the reason why I, I encourage Sir John to, to do this topic is because um, I believe there's a bit of a misconception when it comes to mutual funds for, for most people. No? Uh, akala kasi nila, isang klase lang yung mutual funds. When, akala nila, when you say mutual funds, it's just, ah, any mutual fund is the same mutual fund, no matter the seller, no matter the objective, no matter uh, the name. It's all just one uh, type of fund, and that's not actually true. No, so we want to be able to to help you understand better what are the nuances, what are the differences, what are the the what is the nature of mutual funds. So before we go there again, uh, I'd like to uh, introduce myself again. No? Again, I'm Robbie Samson, the, the Business Development Section Head for Mindanao for First Metro Securities. Uh, we're the stock brokerage arm of the Metro Bank Group. And uh, again, I'm a licensed stock broker, licensed mutual fund solicitor. So uh, I'm, I'm licensed to sell stocks, no? I buy and sell stocks for clients. I'm also licensed to sell mutual funds. Um, aside from that, I'm a Bloomberg Certified Financial Markets Professional. And again, no, uh, I didn't graduate finance. I graduated industrial engineering. So this just goes to show you that really anyone can, can start investing regardless of your educational background. No? So ganun siya ka friendly for investors. So 
Before we go to the mutual funds, no, I guess it's a good idea to first understand well uh, what are the most common reasons why Filipinos do not invest. And siguro even you, kung, kung sakali pong ngayon pa lang kayo mag invest siguro these thoughts have also crossed your mind before. Kaya nga, you should be very, very proud of yourselves that you are moving past th these hurdles that most Filipinos um, encounter mentally and that you are moving towards something that is going to ideally give you financial freedom in the future. No? So what are the reasons why? Uh, usually, ang mga sinasabi ng tao, maliit kasi ang kapital nila. Wala silang malaking pera. So that's something that they use as a reason not to invest. Yung iba, sabi, uh, may pamilya kasi ako or may ano ako, so busy ako. Uh, skill. So they say, ah, I'm not a CPA, I'm not a certified public accountant, I'm not, a, I'm not an economist, I'm not a stockbroker. So if I invest, maybe I won't be successful. So some people think that way. Uh, yung work, no? So I'm busy with work. Uh, I work from 8 to 5, 8 to 6, and when I get home, it's usually late now. All I want to do is just rest. So those are the things that uh, come to mind. Yung leisure, no? When I do have free time, uh, I want to spend it doing the things that I love, no? Uh, watching TV, uh, playing video games, um, going on Facebook, di ba? Or yung uh, experience. So you might think na I, I don't want to invest because I have no prior investing experience. So in my in my four years, uh, in my six years, in my six years, no, of uh, talking to people about investments, especially in the stock market, I've heard all types of these uh, reasons. No, I've heard all of these before. And to be honest, I can tell you right now, these are false no these are not good enough reasons for you not to invest and i will tell you later why no but definitely hindi na po ito applicable ngayon especially with the design that investments have right now this is definitely not true anymore so let's go to um, mutual funds now so the the official definition of mutual funds is that it is uh, it is money from various investors which are pulled together to make up baskets of cash, um, bonds, stocks, or even a combination of all. So the buying and selling of securities are done by an expert fund manager. So it's not done by the client. And as an investor, your ownership is represented by the number of shares you hold in the fund. So it works a little bit differently from stocks. Kasi yung sa stocks, pag bumili ka ng shares ng isang corporation, you own shares of that particular corporation. The same is not the case for mutual funds because you will own uh, shares of the mutual fund itself, not of the stocks that it is investing in. And uh, the goal here is that uh, as share prices uh, increase, so does your investment's value. So again, ang goal natin, buy when it, sell when it's higher. So ganun. And um, as you will find out later, no? Uh, First Meta Securities actually has a facility in our platform that allows you to buy mutual funds. So we've been talking about stocks for the past three sessions. You can do that with your platform, with your First Meta Sec platform. But you can actually also buy mutual funds through the same platform. So that's an added advantage. And uh, one big, uh, one big bonus of buying through us is that you get access to different mutual funds from different mutual fund companies. So, uh, hindi lang namin binibenta yung sarili naming mutual funds. We also sell mutual funds from different companies so that the investor has the power talaga to, to invest in the proper mutual fund that you want. So, um, simple put, this is the... This is the mutual fund cycle. No? Ang nangyayari sa isang mutual fund, the first thing is, we pull our funds. Meaning, pinag-iipon-ipon natin yung pera natin. And after natin mapag-iipon-ipon yung pera, we give it to a fund manager. And yung fund manager na yun, since uh, his role is to handle your money and invest it to the best of his knowledge since it's his job, 
he, he is the one that selects where to invest it. So he invests the cash in a basket of investment. And those basket of investments, as we saw from our previous sessions, over time, especially if you're investing in good companies, they are very, very, very likely to increase in price. So sa madaling salita, it is expected that especially over the long term, you will generate returns. And of course, once you are able to generate returns, you now have the opportunity to withdraw those funds, to sell those shares, and then use it for your own, uh, for your own benefit. So you get to enjoy the fruits of your labor. So it goes back to the investors. So this is the complete mutual fund cycle. So it's that simple. No, it's that simple. So with that said, um, ano ba ngayon? No? Uh, ano ba yung mga issues or yung mga concerns that mutual funds are able to solve? And with that, we have um, three Cs. No? We have uh, competence, convenience, and most of all, capital. So all of these things, these can be solved by investing in mutual funds. So let's go through them one by one. So what do we mean by com competence? Now, again, what this tries to solve is the fact that if you feel like you don't want to invest because you don't know anything about the stock market, this is going to make it that much easier for you. So how so? Because each mutual fund it's employs its own fund management team. So, bawat mutual fund na binibili mo, merong naka-assign dyan na fund manager, siya yung nakatutok dun sa investments na hawak nung, nung mutual fund na yon. So, on the outset pa lang, no, on the onset of your investment pa lang, there's already someone monitoring the investments for you. And the fund manager's sole task is to monitor client investments and look for opportunities. And this is a very important aspect kasi one of the one of the most important things to do when you want to invest in the stock market is, a, is to have the ability to spot good companies from bad. Diba? And that's exactly what we were doing from the past few sessions. Kaya tayo nag about P-E ratios, EPS, earnings, uh, EPS growth, uh, price to book value, uh, dividend deals, all of those things. We talk about all of those things because we want to be able to identify the next best companies to invest in. Now, with mutual funds, even if you are not yet a master of that, even if you don't feel like you don't have the competence yet to do it properly, a fund manager is able to do it for you. So they will be the one to look for opportunities for you. They will be the one to identify which companies you should buy, your money should buy, and which ones your money should avoid. So it's that important. And we have to remember, when we say fund managers in this context, we mean fund people who are highly, highly capable and well-trained. So hindi sila, yung, hindi sila yung typical na fund manager na siguro baka na-encounter natin because the term is being uh, loosely used right now. It's used by even illegitimate investment schemes people use that term. But when we talk about fund managers in the mutual fund context, these are people who have um, the proper certifications and the proper licenses to be able to handle other people's money. So that's, uh, that's how capable they are. Now, and lastly, each mutual fund adheres to the specific fund's objectives and limitations. And later on, we'll discuss that further. Now. So next, um, convenience. No, convenience. So in terms of convenience, one thing that a lot of people like about mutual funds is that um, the net asset value per share or the NAV PS only moves once a day. So uh, if you remember, if you invest in the stock market, kasi, as long as the market is open, then the stock price has the opportunity to go up and down. Diba? It can fluctuate. So, and sometimes, People don't like that. People don't want na their, their, their investments can move all day long. They're not able to, to deal with that kind of pressure. And so with mutual funds, um, prices only moves once per day. So it's a bit more comforting for, for investors in that regard. And each mutual fund is composed of a diversified portfolio of assets. 
So in case you want to own the whole index, which we remember to be the blue chip companies in the Philippines, you can just buy an index fund and it will already contain all of the 30 blue chip companies. No, so you don't necessarily have to pick them up or buy them one by one. So it offers a lot of convenience in that regard. And aside from that, you, you can invest the exact amount that you wish to invest. So if you remember when it comes to investing in the stock market, uh, we are bound by the board lot table, no? by the board lot system. So if the stock's price is, for example, the Globe, no? uh, right now Globe is trading at 2,000 pesos per share. Ang board lot ni Globe, uh, Globe's board lot is 5 shares. So meaning, in order to be able to invest in Globe, you need to have uh, 10,000 pesos right now. So it's not flexible in that regard. How, what will happen if you only have 5,000, 3,000, 2,000 to invest? So you won't be able to invest in the company that you like. But with mutual funds, you are able to specify the amount that you wish to invest. So what lang board lot, board lot sa mutual funds. So if you want to invest 1,000 pesos, that's what you will put in lang. So a lot of people find comfort and, and convenience in that uh, feature of mutual funds. And because of that, because nga meron siyang fund manager, there is no need to monitor on a daily basis. Although you can, no? you can always monitor your investments naman on a daily basis because our platform is online. But with mutual funds kasi, since you know that there is someone else managing it for you, in case you don't want to monitor it on a daily basis, you can rest assured that somebody else is doing it for you. So that's the big advantage of mutual funds. And lastly, no, and I think most importantly for, for a lot of us, mutual funds uh, are affordable, meaning they solve the problem of uh, a perceived lack of capital. So mutual funds involve participation from, from plenty of investors. And because of that, the initial capital requirement is low, especially now in this day and age when mutual fund companies want to make their investments accessible to the common Filipino. They have steadily decreased the minimum initial investment requirement over the years. So I remember back in about five to seven years ago, the minimum to invest in the mutual fund was 100,000 or 50,000 pesos. So it was severely, severely limiting. Kaya ako kahit dati natagalan ako mag-invest kasi you had to put up that capital muna. Uh, but today, no, many mutual funds require only 1,000 pesos to start and even only 500 pesos to, to top up or to add to your investments. So it's that convenient. No? You, can, you can buy shoes or you can buy watches more, more expensive than that. So it's definitely a, a very good option. No? So there's no excuse for you not to be investing right now. And again, because uh, we offer or there are a lot of mutual funds available, you can choose from the right you can choose from the right mutual fund for your investment objective. So how does it uh, how does it work no? Um, when it comes to mutual funds, kasi, uh, we can probably look at it this way. This is the power of mutual funds. So let's say there are Sabinat and there's 15 of us here right now. You know? There's 15 of us here right now, and each of us, let's say, has 10,000 pesos each to invest. Now, we each have 10,000 pesos to invest. Now, let's say each of us, we want to invest for the long term, and so since we're investing for the long term, we want to diversify. Diba? Mahirap mag long term sa isang kumpanya or sa dalawang kumpanya lang. What if you make the wrong choice? So, it's hard to invest in the long term if you're going to, to not diversify. So let's say we each have 10,000 pesos. Now we want to invest for the long term, but unfortunately right now, let's say our 10,000 pesos will only allow us to buy four companies. No? So let's say we can only buy four companies with our 10,000 pesos. Do you think that's already well diversified? So, kung ako tatanungin ninyo, it's not 
well diversified. In fact, there are I think six subsectors, sub indices in the stock market right now. So dun palang di ka na makapag diversify. So how much more if you have only four? So that's the that's the limitation you will encounter when you are only able to buy stocks individually. So ganun yung nagiging problema. Now, let's say ang gagawin natin since we each have 10,000 pesos each, what we will do is we will pull our money. And so our 10,000 will become 150,000 pesos collectively. Now with 150,000, we are not limited to just buying four different companies. We can now actually buy the whole index. We can buy the whole 30 blue chip companies in the country. And that is definitely well diversified now, especially if you're going to do it for the long term. So that's the concept behind mutual funds. It allows us, even with just 10,000, 5,000, 1,000 pesos, it allows us to invest in the 30 best companies in the Philippines. So that's how powerful mutual funds are. So with that said, uh, ito yung sinabi ko, kaya, kaya I requested this session from Sir John from before. Because I really wanted to be able to, to explain to you further the fact that uh, there are actually lots of different mutual funds. So pagka po nadinig nyo yung word na mutual fund, don't immediately assume na it's just one type. So there are actually plenty of different mutual funds. But in the Philippines, um, these are the four most common ones. So we have the money market funds, we have the bond funds, we have the balance funds, and we have the equity funds. So ano ba po yung money market funds? These are considered to be the safest kind of mutual fund because they are uh, invested in very, very safe uh, instruments. So where are they invested? So as you can see, they're invested in um, time deposits, treasury bills, uh, other short-term bonds. So the risk level is low, pero as we all know, uh, low risk, low reward. So when you invest in a money market fund, don't expect your money to grow by a lot. All it really does is protect your capital in some way in that uh, it's a bit, uh, it's slightly higher than the returns you would get from savings accounts. So ganun siya. We have naman also bond funds which are from the name itself. These are mutual funds that are invested in bonds. So they provide stability and moderate income. So these are invested in debt instruments with fixed interest rates e issued by either governments or private corporations. So um, yung bonds po kasi sa madaling salita, no, utang sila. So pag kasi sinabi mong government bond, nagpa-utang ka sa gobyerno. Pag sinabi mong corporate bond, nagpa-utang ka sa isang korporasyon. And especially in the case of uh, government bonds, they are considered to, some bonds are considered to be risk-free. Risk-free siya in the sense na it is very, very unlikely that the government itself no, will default on its loan. Because yun nga, uh, they have the ability to, the central bank has the ability to, to print money in case kulangin ng pera. So they are typically considered uh, risk-free. So that's why the risk level is still low but they offer slightly higher returns compared to money market funds. Um, the next one, uh, the, equity, the equity fund, ito na po yung siguro mas madalas nating ma-encounter. These are mutual funds that are invested in the Philippine stock market. So they offer the highest risk with the highest potential return, uh, especially over the long term. So they are invested in the stock market, whether blue chips pa yan, uh, dividend yielding, uh, growth stocks. So, halo-halo na po yan. And because of that, um, the risk level for this kind of fund is, is com uh, relatively higher compared to the others. No? And we also have, lastly, the balance fund. And the balance fund is essentially just a combination of a bond fund and an equity fund. So, ganun lang siya. Mutual fund siya na merong bonds Pero meron ding equity fund. So it's like the best of both worlds. No? So ganun po siya. So to, to, to explain it better, no? to, to show it better, uh, each mutual fund has its own behavior. 
they have uh, their own behavior because uh, they have their own uh, objective. No? So not all mutual funds are the same. They are not create, not all mutual funds are equal. So as you can see here from the performance of three different mutual funds from 2009 to today, no? uh, makikita natin, iba-iba talaga sila gumalaw. So dito natin makikita, uy, iba-iba pala talaga ang bawat mutual fund. They each have their own goals. They each have their own um, uh, objectives. So the blue one is an equity fund, specifically an index fund, which means this is a mutual fund that is invested in the 30 blue chip companies in the Philippines. So ang goal niya, since it's invested in the riskiest asset class from, from all the choices, ang goal niya is to maximize capital appreciation. Meaning, you want your money to grow. It will be volatile. It can drop by a lot, but it, it can also grow by a lot, especially over the long term. So, ganun po siya. The next one naman is the balance fund, the gold one. So, as we said earlier, moderate growth, moderate volatility. So, it's like the best of both worlds. Uh, bond fund naman, ang objective niya, it's not to maximize capital appreciation, but rather, it's a way for you to protect your capital. So, what do we mean by protecting your capital in the context of investments? Uh, when we say protecting your capital, that means um, your objective, your goal is to simply minimize or equalize the effect of inflation. Diba? Inflation, as we all know, is the regular increase of prices. No? So it's normal naman. As long as hindi masyadong tumaas ang inflation, it's normal. And we can expect prices to go up year after year. No? So that's normal. So kung ikaw mag invest ka sa isang bond fund, definitely you don't want your money to grow by a lot. So let's say the, uh, the inflation rate is uh, 2.5%. No? Let's say the inflation rate is 2.5%, meaning prices go up by 2.5% uh, in a year. So, if you were investing in a bond fund, your goal is to make just around 2% lang then, or slightly higher lang, maybe 3, 3.5%. So, what you want to do lang is to make sure that your purchasing power is not diminished, meaning your capital is uh, preserved. So that um, your 500,000 today, what it can buy in, to, uh, in today's time will, be, will enable it to buy the same five or three or five years from now. So that's the goal of capital protection. You don't want to, you don't want to grow your money. You just want to protect your capital. The, the same cannot be said when you invest in an index fund or an equity fund. If the inflation rate is 2.5%, then that means um, your goal is to have your investments perform better than that. Maybe 8%, 9%, 10%, 12%, 15%. So it will depend on its performance. But your goal is to maximize capital appreciation. And if you look to the right, no, you can see their performances. So over this time period, from 2002 the, until today, no, nearly the first half of uh, the year, the, the equity fund or the index fund went up by almost 200%. The balance fund went up by around 100%. And the red one, the bond fund, only went up by 67%. So dito natin makikita, we have to, we have to be able to identify which mutual fund we want to invest in. We cannot just invest in anything. We have to know the type of mutual fund that we are investing in. So I hope that's, uh, that's clear because that's a very, very important aspect when it comes to mutual fund investing. So um, when, when, uh, should you open a First Metro Securities account, you can actually access uh, our fund smart platform from the same website and you will have access to different kinds of mutual funds. So right now, we have different money market funds uh, available. No? So it comes from different... Uh, mutual fund company. So we have the ALFM, which is Ayala. We have Philam. We have First Metro Save and Learn, which is uh, our sister company, FAMI. 
and we have the Sun Life Prosperity Market Market Fund, which is uh, yun, Sun Life uh, uh, Mutual Funds naman, no? So, Sun Life Asset Management. So, mayroon tayong apat na iba-ibang klaseng mutual funds. Next naman, we have the bond fund. When it comes to bonds, we have slightly more because there's a bit more uh, demand for, for bond funds in the Philippines. So, yan. Iba-iba din po silang klase. So, later on, I'll, I'll show you how you can decide which of these ones would you wish to invest in? In case you want to invest in a bond, bond fund, paano nyo ba po mapipili kung alin dyan sa, sa 12 na yan ang pinakabagay para sa investment objective ninyo? So, we will go there later. So, balance fund, we also have this one. So, again, balance funds are, are mutual funds that uh, contain both bonds and stocks. The goal is to minimize the volatility but also give you some growth potential. And of course, we have the most popular kind of mutual funds, the equity funds. So as you can see po, iba-iba uh, talaga sila. May kanya-kanyang objectives bawat isa dyan. And as you, will, you might notice, there are funds that say index fund or Philippine stock index fund. When you see that, it usually means it's invested in the PSEI or the 30 blue chip companies. When it doesn't contain the word index, uh, usually it means it's, it has a different kind of objective, which we'll get to later. So, ayan. So, when it comes to equity funds, as you saw earlier, there are a lot of different equity funds or, or mutual funds out there. So, ano ba po yung main differences between an index fund and an equity fund? Both of them are technically equity funds, but uh, may subclassification tayo na index. So, what do they mean? When you say index fund, that means that particular mutual fund is only invested in the 30 blue chip companies of the Philippines. So, sa madaling salita, it tracks the PSEI. So, it mirrors the performance of the PSEI. So if the PSEI for this year goes up by 10%, the index fund will also go up by around the same 10%. So ganun po yung meaning nun. When we say naman equity fund, it has the opportunity to invest in non-PSEI stocks also. So it will now depend on the fund objective. So pwede pong mag-invest ang isang equity fund sa blue chips Pero pwede ding meron siyang hawak na hindi blue chips. So that will be up to the fund, fund manager na. And the goal naman po, kung bakit merong binibenta ng equity fund, the goal niya is to outperform the PSEI. So if the PSEI performs by 10% this year, ang goal po ni equity fund is to perform higher than that. So if the, if the PSEI makes 10%, its goal is to make 12%, 15%, 20%, 25%. 25%. So, it yun yung goal. Niya. That doesn't mean that every time it is actually able to outperform the market. So, it's not a given. But that is the objective of the fund. No? So, ganun po siya. So, aside from that, no, uh, I feel obliged na lang din to mention in case any of you have um, U.S. dollars, no? in case you have U.S. dollars that you don't want to convert into pesos, you can also actually invest your U.S. dollars in our dollar-denominated mutual funds. And the good thing about our dollar-denominated mutual funds is that they are not invested in the Philippines. So another way and to diversify further. Because... Uh, Medyo mahirap kasi mag, uh, for, for some people, mahirap mag-open ng U.S. stock brokerage account because the, the initial requirement is usually higher. So it's probably around $1,000 to $2,000 ang minimum initial uh, capital requirement mo doon. No? So, but in, the, in, in mutual funds na binibenta sa First Metro, which are dollar-denominated, you will have access to the same stocks from a for, uh, from a mutual fund perspective, meaning you can invest in Netflix, in Google or Alphabet, Apple, Facebook, uh, Alibaba, Samsung, Bank of China, 
uh, you can invest in them indirectly through our dollar denominated mutual funds. So these are some of our dollar denominated mutual funds right now. So as you can see from their titles, or so from their names, they are very, very specific when it comes to their objective. Meron kang dollar bond fund. So obviously from the name itself, it is aimed at uh, investing in bonds. Meron ka ding World Voyager Fund, which is invested in U.S. equities, no? or in equities all over the world, pala, not just the U.S. Meron ka din uh, Pami Asia Balance Fund, which naman uh, invest in Asian stocks, no? na hindi, hindi kasali ang Pilipinas. So this is a very, very good way for you to diversify your investments. And it's made better because yun nga, uh, you are not forced to change your dollars into pesos if you don't want to. So this is all dollar denominated. So that's how flexible it is for you. So now we go to the profile page. Because um, like I said, how will you be able to make the best decision possible when it comes to selecting the right mutual fund for you? So I'm, I'm happy to let you all know no, that each of the mutual funds that, uh, that is available on your first Metrosec platform, each of them has their own profile page. So the profile page contains all of the necessary information uh, that you need to learn about the, the specific fund. No? So for example, this one is the Managed Income Fund by Philab. So essentially, this is a fixed income, no? uh, fixed income fund. No, money market. So you can see here the provider, the philosophy, the type, the benchmark, the currency, and then the fee information, very important. Dito yung, ito po yung sinasabi ko, it's very, very um, affordable to invest in mutual funds. The minimum to invest in this fund is just 1,000 pesos. And the minimum additional requirement so nakapag-invest na kayo once and gusto niyo magdagdag is just 500 pesos. So it's that simple, no? Tapos meron ka minimum redemption amount 500 pesos, minimum holding period 7 days, 7 um 7 calendar days, and you will see here management fee. So ano po yung management fee? The management fee is what you pay the fund manager. So it's 0.25% per annum. So it's not a lot, no? considering that they will do all the work for you. Uh, it's not a lot. And the early redemption fee, it's 1% uh, of your total investments. So ano ba po yung early redemption fee? Uh, when it comes to mutual funds, kasi, it is encouraged that you hold it for somewhat the long term or at the very least medium term. So it's not like the stock market where you can just buy and sell day in, day out, or buy now after 10 minutes if you made money na, sell na. So it doesn't work like that for mutual funds. Fund managers uh, want to encourage their investors to hold them for the long term. Kaya nag institute sila ng minimum holding period. So meaning, if you invest in the PMIF fund, and you, for some reason, want to sell it before it reaches seven days, you will be charged the early redemption fee of 1%. But if you buy it and then hold it uh, two weeks, kahit ibenta mo pa yan, hindi ka na charge ng early redemption fee. So that's the difference. So that's what the early redemption fee means. So sa performance naman, the NAV PS is essentially the price of the mutual fund. The percent changed daily. So how did it go up or down today? Year-to-date change. No? So up to the year-to-date of, of when you checked it. One-year change, three-year change, and five-year change. Uh, Doon sa lower right-hand corner, you would also see their top holding. So in line with their objective as a money market fund, most of their holdings are in government securities. And only 20% or 19% is allocated for corporate bonds. So makikita nyo agad, ah, ito yung tipo ng mutual fund na hindi siguro tataas ang kita ko. Which is true naman kasi 
over the past five years, it made only 7.55%. So if you divide 7.55 by five years, that's just a little bit above 1% per year. So definitely your money is not growing there because the inflation rate is higher than that. So this is what you can consider to be a parking lot of your money. Kaya nga po maigsi ang holding period niya kasi we want to be able to help you become mobile. So kung wala pa kayong paglalagyan ng pera sa stock market, feeling ninyo mataas, mataas pa ang market, ayaw nyo pa i-deploy, pwede nyo munang ilagay sa mga money market funds namin para hindi lang din siya natutulog. So ganun po yung uh, objective niyan. Next, we have the bond fund. So essentially, it's all the same. So in this case lang po, sa fee information, you would see the minimum investment is 1,000. The additional is 1,000. So you will be able to see the differences between all of them. So bond fund naman, from, it, from the name itself, is invested mostly in bonds. Government securities, corporate bonds, money market, may contact. So ganun siya. We have the PAMI Horizon Fund and according to the type, it's a balance fund. So you can see from the lower, um, lower, ano, uh, lower funds, the uh, lower right-hand corner, it's easy to see that talagang nearly 50-50 splits sila. 53% is in stocks, 47% is in fixed income uh, investments. So kaya yung performance niya, slightly lower. No? So the minimum initial 5,000 then the additional is 1,000. So we can see here. Tapos, um, since must actively manage siya, you will notice the management fee is also higher. So ganun po yan. And this one is an index fund. So ito na yung sinasabi natin. It's an equity fund that aims to track and closely match the performance of the PSEI. So as you can see, 100% of the fund's money is in equities. Na? So yun yung objective niya eh. Hindi ka pwedeng bumili ng index fund tapos makikita mo naka-invest pala siya sa government bonds. So they will not do that. That's why it's important to know exactly what type of mutual fund uh, you are in investing in. So, if you'll notice pala, sorry, if you'll notice just below the name, no, yung Phil Equity PSE Index Fund, you'll notice we have there the Phil Equity website, the fact sheet, and the prospectus. Now, if you want to learn more about the, the individual fund, you can simply click on the prospect, but it's a bit long, or you can click on the fact sheet, which is regularly updated. So, it's like the report that the mutual fund provides for its investors no? so that um, you are able to you are able to to know exactly the sentiments the review of the investments of this particular fund so let's look at one particular fact sheet so ganito yung makikita nyo po no? so when you click on the fact sheet uh, this will pop up in your browser so you will now be able to see the latest fact sheet available so this one uh, usually, fact sheets are updated minsan once a month or once a quarter. So it depends on the mutual fund itself. Um, but this is uh, the Atom Alpha Opportunity Fund. So on the right side, you will see there's a manager's review. So quick summary about what happened in the market and how they approach the news. So fund attribution and positioning. So makikita nyo dyan, ah, saan ba naglagay ng pera itong fund na to? Agree ba siya? Aligned ba siya with my objectives? This one kasi, it, this is, a, this is a, a mutual fund that aims to invest in the medyo middle class of stocks in the stock market. Meaning they are high growth but they are not considered blue chips. So if you read their report, you will have a better understanding of just what they intend to do with your money, how they intend to manage it, and if it aligns with your vision of what you want out of your investments, you can select this one. Otherwise, kung sasabihin mo, ay, this is too risky for me. I don't want my money invested in um, mid-cap stocks. No? 
I want them invested in blue chip stocks. So you can select a mutual fund that is invested in blue chips. So that's why it's important to, ito usually naman mga one-pager reports lang siya. So it's important to get a feel for the mutual fund that you're investing in. So once you are ready, no? Once you are ready to, to buy, like I said earlier, when it comes to purchasing mutual funds, it's easier to do compared to the stock market. No? It's easier to buy mutual funds than stocks. Number one, because you can do it anytime. So even now, now that we're uh, now at 9 p.m., if you want to invest in mutual funds right now, kasi ngayon lang kayo bakante, you can just go to your first Metrosec platform, enter all the details such as this one, and then you'll be able to post your order now. So you'll be able to buy. Unlike in the stock market, you really have to, you are only able to conduct transactions during uh, trading hours. So you can still post, but you will not receive any confirmation until the next trading day. So ganun po yung difference nila. So this one, when you go to your first Metro Securities website, just go to the invest section, click on new instruction, and uh, of course, when you want to buy, we call it subscribe in mutual funds. When you want to sell, we call it redeem. So just click on subscribe, enter the fund code of your choice. So each mutual fund has its own fund code. Kung hindi nyo pa po kabisado yung fund code nung gusto nyo bilhin, um, click on fund guide and then uh, yun, you will see all of the mutual funds available. And enter the amount. So for this particular mutual fund, the Save and Learn Equity Fund, the minimum is 5,000 pesos. The additional is 1,000 pesos. So ganon. So just enter all of those, click on preview instruction, and you will be asked to enter your password again. After entering your password, click on send instruction, and then you're done. Uh, so you can look at your mutual fund inside your portfolio after one to two working days. Uh, so ganun lang siya ka simple. So wala ka nang titingnan na bid ask, di ba? Wala nang ganun, hindi mo na kailangan i-transact during um, trading hours. So all you really need to enter the fund code, enter the amount, that's it. So that's how simple it is to buy mutual funds. So ganun siya. So what makes FundSmart so powerful? So I'd like to let you know na lang then because I think it's going to be very beneficial naman din for you. When it comes to uh, FundSmart, which is what we call our mutual fund section in the platform, again, you are able to buy all of the different mutual fund companies, no? mutual funds from different mutual fund companies. And aside from that, each one of them pa has their own profile page. Aside from that, the when you buy your mutual funds through our platform, uh, wala kayo, hindi kayo ito charge ng sales load. You won't be charged a sales load. So what is the sales load? So traditionally kasi, uh, way back when, uh, before the advent of online investing and before we were able to introduce FundSmart, uh, one of the most common ways to buy mutual funds is to go through an agent. And yung mga agents po na yun, when you go to them, or not even agents, kasi even if you go through a, to their offices, uh, you head to their office and you invest in their funds, you would still be charged the sales load. And uh, most common po na charge dyan is around 2%. So meaning, if you invest 5,000 pesos, they would actually be taking out 100 pesos as the sales load. So your actual investment would only be 4,900. So sa madaling salita, if you invest 5,000 regularly every month, in 10 years, you would pay an extra 12,000 pesos. So hindi din siya barya. No? So it's significant pa din. Whereas, if you go through FundSmart, you are able to do it by yourself. No? So all you need to do, just log into your account, Make a few clicks, make sure your account is funded lang, and then you're able to buy mutual funds. Aside from that, there is no sales load when you go through FundSmart. So if you invest 5,000, wala siyang kaltas, you would be investing the full 5,000 pesos. So in 10 years, you would be saving an extra 12,000 pesos. But the 12,000 pesos that you save, 
it's not going back to you, di ba? It's still just invested. And since it is invested, it still has the opportunity to make money on its own. So, yung natipid mo na 12,000, since nandun lang din siya sa investments mo, it has the opportunity to make its own money. And so, after 10 years, your 12,000 may become 20,000 pesos. So, kaya po, if you'll notice, yung mga mayayaman, yung mayaman ng yung mayaman, because they're able to maximize the power of their money. They're able to make their money work for them. And I think that's what we all want to do here by virtue of being in this session and by virtue of joining the, the program created by, by Sir Jan. No? So, are mutual funds right for So just to be able to let us let ourselves understand better now uh, mutual funds when can we determine whether mutual funds are perfect for us so if you answer yes to any of these questions then i believe mutual funds may be the right investment option for you right now so if you feel like hindi ka pa magaling na stock picker so although we've discussed uh, concepts about how to be a good stock picker over the past few sessions feeling mo Hindi ka pa ganun kagaling, you'd like to study more. So, it doesn't mean na hindi ka pwede mag-invest. So, baka ibig sabihin lang nun, imbis na sa stock market ka agad mag-invest, yung individuals, baka dapat dumaan ka muna sa mutual funds. So, ako personally, when I started investing 10 years ago, I also started with mutual funds. No. So, yun din yung parang gateway ko, yung entry point ko to the world of investing. So, other than that, pagka-feeling mo, busy ka. So, if you feel like you're busy and you don't have the time to monitor the stock market, you can go to mutual funds. Or, most importantly, if you feel like you're a potential emotional investor. So, ano yung emotion? Yung pagka kumikita ka, masyado kang masaya, na kinakabahan ka, pagka bumagsak yung stocks mo, para kang hindi makatulog dahil hindi mo alam kung ano mangyayari. So, pagka ganun yung nararamdaman mo, perhaps it's not yet the right time for you to go into the stock market. Maybe you can go through a fund manager first so that mawawala yung kaba mo. So, with that said, no, this is the analogy that I love using when comparing stocks with mutual funds. So, the stocks for me, parang, parang ikaw ang driver. No, parang ikaw ang driver. And sa mutual funds, para kang may driver. So, pagka ikaw ang driver, the good thing is, you have full control over your route and your destination. Di ba? Pagka nagmamadali ka, you can take the shortcut. Pagka, pagka medyo leisurely drive ka lang, you can go through the long cut. No? So, you have full control over your route, over your destination. Pero the downside is, of course, when you are driving, uh, you really cannot sleep. <laughs> you have to keep your hands on the wheel, eyes on the road, focus on what you are doing. Whereas if you are, if you have a driver or if you're riding a taxi, all you need to do is say to the taxi driver, boss, uh, please bring me to a brisa. And then, pwede ka na matulog, di ba? Pwede ka mag-relax, pwede ka mag -cell phone. 15, 20 minutes later, you'll arrive at your destination. So it's very, very easy. No? So kaya, when it comes to the stock market, usually I would advocate people invest in the stock market individually, no? especially kung short-term ang gusto mong perspective, if you are experienced in it. But if you feel like you don't have the experience yet, but you don't want, uh, but you still want to invest in the stock market, then perhaps mutual funds are right for you. So, uh, like I said earlier, no, when I started investing, you know, more than ten years ago, I started with mutual funds. Then, uh, and then, naging na, naging gusto ko yung world of investing. I found it amazing that I could make money from the comfort of my computer lang, no, di ba? So, uh, I studied further. I studied technical analysis. I learned about fundamentals. Uh, I devoted a lot of time studying. So, especially when I was still st starting out in investing in the stock market, I 
I would I would study two to three hours every night. No? So I would look at charts all night long. There were multiple times when I would dream of charts. No, there was <laughs> even what. Oh, talagang totoo. Uh, I was dreaming of charts. Charts were very vivid. There was even one instance when I was driving and talagang parang stocks lang yun iniisip ko. Kasi that's what it 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 needs. No, if you want to 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 master or to learn about stock trading. Whereas in mutual funds, yun, just put your money, then go do what you want to do. So it's that simple. So ganun siya. So with that said, um, if you are inclined to start investing in mutual funds, uh, perhaps this, uh, this strategy may be um, good for you. No? So we call it the cost averaging strategy. And if you've heard of uh, Bo Sanchez, no, and especially his book, yung How My Maid Became a Millionaire in the Stock Market or something like that. This is actually the strategy that they employed. No, so cost averaging means uh, the strategy of investing a fixed amount at regular intervals regardless of the current market trend. So, uh, ang nangyayari dito, kaya natin to ginagawa kasi we acknowledge the fact that we do not know much about the stock market. We might not have a lot of capital to begin with. And we trust in the fact that over the, long, over the long period of time, over a long period of time, the stock market will go up. Yeah, the stock market will go up. And if you agree on all of those three points, then I think you will see the merit of the cost averaging strategy, which is essentially telling you no matter what the price, buy regularly. When prices are low, buy. When prices are high, buy. So that's the, that's the whole point of cost averaging and you do it for the long term. So cost averaging is not a strategy that you employ for two years. It's not a strategy that you employ for five years. You employ it ideally 10 years or more. Ako, when I first started working, when I graduated from college, I won't say when na lang. <laughs> Pero when I first graduated from college, no, especially that tech, I would really make it a point to invest my a portion of my salary sa sa isang index fund, no. And I, I and I continue to do it now, no? So the goal here. Is this one? No. How do we do peso cost averaging the proper way? So, it's actually just four easy steps. So it's very very easy. It's very simple to understand. So number one, you schedule. Number two, you decide the investment amount. Number three, you set your time horizon. And number four, you select the product. So, uh, number one, you schedule. So why do you need to schedule? Scheduling kasi means you are disciplined. So in my case, whenever I get my salary, immediately pagpasok ng para sa account, ano na yan, diretso investment na yan. Uh, para hindi ko na siya magastos. No? So whatever is left, yun yung gagastosin ko for, for whatever. But I always have uh, a prescribed amount set aside for investments for the long term. So that I'll have, uh, ideally, I'll have a, uh, I'll have enough retirement fund in the future. So number two, you set your investment amount. So that will depend on you, especially when mutual funds na, diba? na the minimum is just 1,000 and some mutual funds have a minimum additional of just 500. So it's very, very flexible. Uh, uh, siguro, rule of thumb, if you can invest anywhere between 10 to 20 or even 30% of your salary, that's going to be very, very good for you later on. No? And when you get your bonuses, 13th month, 14th month, stuff like that, perhaps you can invest 50% of that in addition to your normal. No? Para lang ma, ma supercharge lalo yung investments mo. Next, number three, set your time horizon. So there is no, there is no person naman or there's no one who will be knocking on your door telling you, ah, you're, you're short when it comes to the year's investment. So it's not, it's not, uh, it's not going to beholden you. But better if you set your time horizon. Uh, the longer, the better. No, so 
to 10 years or above, usually okay yan. No? Uh, because you'll be able to go through a whole market cycle na. So you'll be able to buy at the highs. You'll also be able to buy at the lows. And of course, you select your product. So that will be up to you to, the, to select what kind of mutual fund you want. So you can, uh, but for our purposes here, we will use the index fund as our example. And so if you do it regularly, invest 1,000 pesos every 15 a month for 10 years in an index fund. After 10 years, your total contribution would be 120,000 pesos. Now, if you only put your 1,000 pesos per month in, in a bank account, you would have 120,000 pesos after 10 years. Is that good or bad? That's good. Diba? At least you have 120. Pero, when you, ha when you only save your money, that means it is not yet working. It is still sleeping. May naiipon ka, pero hindi mo pinagtatrabaho yung naipon mo. So, for me, that's not right. No? Hindi, hindi tama yun. Dapat tayo yung nagpapahinga. Hindi yung pera natin. Buti, buti pa yung pera natin nakakatulog. Tayo hindi, di ba? When it comes to working. So, we need to make sure that we are also making our money work. And the beauty of making your money work is that your money will never get tired. <laughs> you can make it work 24-7. Make it work 24 and it will never knock at your door and say, hey, Sir, I'm so tired. I cannot work. I'm sick. <laughs> it will never do that. So you can just keep on, you can just let your money work and work and work and work. So it's important to do so. And so if you let your money work, which in our ca case means investing, then it might grow at, let's say, 8% per year. And so, after 10 years, yung 120,000 pesos mo, pwedeng maging 180-200,000 pesos. So that's the beauty of investing. And this is the beauty of doing cost averaging. Because sa halagang 1,000, which is, I would assume, uh, doable, if not affordable for, for us, uh, uh, we can set aside something for our future. And just to give you even more reasons no, to really start investing as early as you can, just look at this table. No? Just look at this table. So every 15th of the month pa din, once a month. Pero ito, 1,500 pesos. So let's look at it from three different time frames. So five, you, you cost average for five years, 15, and 25. So, of course, if you invest one five per month for five years, you would invest a total of 90,000 pesos. Uh, 15 years, 270. 25 years, of course, 90 times 5 is 450. But as you'll notice, when it comes to the total returns generated by your funds, it's not proportional. No, it's not proportional to the length of time that you are waiting. 5 and 15 years is time 3 the length of time. But the amount generated for you is not just times 3. It's more than that. 5 and 25 is 5 times the length of time. But the amount generated for you moves from 120,000 pesos to 2.7 million pesos. All because of compounding interest. And as we all know, compounding interest is essentially, uh, Einstein called it now the eighth water of the world. No? Because it's essentially your interest making interest and that interest making interest. So it snowballs. No? Nagi is snowballs. It's like gaining an employee year after year. So that's how powerful compounding interest is. And that's something that we should appreciate deeply because that will help us uh, manage our funds better now because we will now be more inclined to invest our funds instead of just spending them on, on things that will not add value in the future. So, how to get started? Again, we've gone through this uh, before, no? but uh, in case you're still undecided or in case you, you haven't done so yet, no? uh, account opening with First Metro Securities is paperless now. So, when it comes to account opening, funding, withdrawals, and even the procurement of your statement of accounts, uh, 
statements of account. Uh, it's all online na lang po. So, you don't need to fill out any forms anymore. In fact, when it comes to opening an account, you just need to follow essentially three easy steps. So, even our website is optimized for cell phones. So, wherever you choose to open, laptop or cell phone, it's going to be, should be very, very easy for you. So, first step, just go to our website, first www.firstmetrosec.com.ph. Click on open account and then simply complete the online form. So, it's just your standard information being asked. And then after that, upload your documents online. So meaning, no, just upload all your IDs, your proof of billing, your, your proof of bank account, stuff like that. You can do it all online. And after it's all completed, you just need to wait a few days and then your account will be activated. Now. So it's that simple. No? And hindi ako masyado namimilit dati nung first few sessions, but uh, since this is fourth session, I hope <laughs> you have a better appreciation of investing. So if you haven't done so yet, if you haven't started investing yet, I've given, I hopefully I've given you enough compelling reasons to start as soon as you can. No, because it's not costly, it's not complex, and it's, uh, it's not that uh, difficult to manage. So definitely anyone can do it, regardless of your background, of your job, of your status. Definitely, you can invest. No. So aside from that, if you do open an account with us, you will be also able to join our Viber group. No. So this is where we lay out, uh, we send you all the different uh, daily financial market updates, alerts on new research reports, and community sharing and reviewing. And you can also inquire about your accounts through Viber. And again, no, uh, if you open an account or even if you haven't done so yet, I'd like to invite you to like the Facebook page of First Metro. So we're just First Metro Securities on Facebook. And after you like our page, I would also like to invite you to join our uh, growing community. So our Facebook group. So uh, madami din po kayo makikita doon. And and also, uh, subscribe to our YouTube page. So for those of you that want to delve deeper into the stock market, we have lots of different content out there. Even yung mga uh, market recaps, which are very, very important in this time of uh, COVID. No? Uh, we have that available for you in our YouTube page. So just look for First Meta Securities and subscribe. And... Ito po yung mga funding options available for all of you. So it's very convenient. So we have BPI, Land Bank, BDO, and of course, Metro Bank Online Banking. Kung wala kayo nun, pwedeng through GCash or coins.ph. So that's all possible. So with that said, no, so that's uh, what mutual funds are. That's essentially how we can start investing in mutual funds and how we can determine which mutual funds are best for us. So talagang I wanted to help you understand better because I believe na there's a lot of misconception about mutual funds pa out there. So hopefully this session has served its purpose well in helping you understand the different kinds of mutual funds at your disposal. So with that, no? Uh, sir, I, I, I think my questions pa naman. No? Do we have questions? Yeah. Parang may yeah. lumalabas. Yeah. So, Actually. Yeah. So, siguro I'll open up the, the floor for questions na. Alright. So, first of all, Robbie, once again, maraming salamat. Uh, the <laughs> session is very clear. It's, um, actually, it's one of the things that we already discussed rin sa course, pero iba talaga when you have, when you have more figures and you also talked about a lot of a lot of it rin. Sige, so maraming, maraming question. Uh, mm -hmm. let's, let's do our best to answer all of them. So first, sure. the question would be coming from medyo, yung pangalan niya is Telepreneur Stockist. No? So mm -hmm. I really don't know his real name. Mm -hmm. uh, since you're working in First Metro Securities, you're the best person to answer this. Why First Metro Securities? Like, bakit yun ang gagamitin na broker? <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> hirap sagutin no without bad. No, no, no. Seriously, seriously. 
Pero no, uh, why first metal security? So number number one, uh, at least for me, uh, we have kasi different platforms. So what the, the screenshots that I showed you earlier were taken from uh, what we call our classic website. So it's been our website for, for so long. So it's usually geared more toward long-term investors. No? So it's very user-friendly. The interface is clean. Uh, the fonts are big. Uh, so it's very, very easy to navigate. Aside from that, we also have what we call First Metrosec Pro. And the Pro platform naman is the one we designed for more advanced traders. So it contains a lot more information. The interface is different. It looks a bit more like what you would see from a Bloomberg terminal. Uh, all the way down to the fact that you can change the colors of the screen. Tapos yung interface niya, ayan, ano din, uh, yun, medyo mas fully featured siya. You can see mga market pressure, uh, mga conditional orders. We have uh, more indicators available when you chart your, your stocks, stuff like that. And uh, also, yung pinaka-latest update namin, which was First Metrosec Go, which is our mobile platform. So in my experience, uh, especially for our clients, medyo, medyo madalas nasa labas, uh, they are able to still monitor their shares or trade their stocks, even with just the cell phone. And uh, yun, let me tell you, of course, it might sound biased, but uh, let me tell you, it's really, really good to use yung platform na yun, yung first metro sec go, because it's, it's smooth. The interface is also clean. Tapos the information is is uh, located there. No? So, ano naman, uh, right now kasi during the ECQ, this is ECQ pa sa, sa NCR right now, uh, we're actually allowing clients to open accounts for free. So you can actually just go on opening an account, then test the website out for yourself, see if you like it. No, pero I believe you will naman. So that's one thing. Aside from the fact that you can transfer funds online, the account opening process is also online. So it's very simple. Hindi ka na magpiprint. So all of those things uh, are addressed in their latest updates. Ayun. So that's that's why, guys, our first Metro Securities, um, as a customer as well, or as a user of first Metro Securities, way, way back when I started investing in stocks, rin, I personally use Call Financial, COL Financial. Um, so if you're going to search that in the internet, uh, meron din yun. And then that's the very first broker that I used. So when I found out about First Metro Securities, because ang history kasi is I had a speaking engagement together with Robbie. We shared the same stage. And then doon ko, na, doon ko nalaman about this. And ang nakita ko na advantage talaga niya is meron talaga siyang mobile app. Uh, Call Financial as of now, as far as I know, wala pa silang, wala pa silang mobile app. So yun, yun pa lang, that's a huge differentiator na. And it's so easy to use. No? In fact, I bought most of the stocks that I have now through the app, not through the, the <laughs> ano, sa computer. Ginagamit ko lang yung computer talaga when I want to study more about the business because it has a bigger screen and I can, I can have more view Sa, sa information. So yun na naman. Um, Nag-follow up si, ano, si Telepreneur Stockist. Uh, sabi niya na he recently opened an account then sa First Metro Securities. So yay! <laughs> yay. Congrats. Yeah. Congrats! Hopefully, hopefully you, you enjoy your, your experience with us, sir. Alright. Or ma'am. Next, <laughs> next question. Yeah. Hindi natin alam kung uh, lalaki ba to si Telepreneur Stock is or hindi. Okay. Next question coming from Pretzel Ann. Sir, need ba talaga PH Bank account? Because si May Ann kasi Sir Robbie, uh, she's currently in Singapore. So, mm. kailangan ba talaga na Philippine Bank account? Uh, right now, yes, we need a Philippine bank account. Although if you're in Singapore, uh, I believe you're able to open a, a PH bank account pa naman din. So as far as I know, sa Lucky Plaza, may branch doon si PNB, if I'm not mistaken. And I believe, uh, yeah, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe you can open an account there. Tapos, katabi lang din niya si Metro Remit which is yung Metrobank remittance, no? 
Singapore. So I know the people there. Uh, you can now, after opening an account and after having an account with First Metro, you can also link your your account with Metro Remit there so that you can send your funds through Metro Remit to your First Metro Securities account. So, Ayun. pwede yan. Mm -mm. All right. So, the Sige. bank account doesn't have to be Metro Bank if you're in Singapore because I believe uh, wala pa atang account opening services si Metro Bank sa Singapore. All righty. All right. Next question natin is, uh, this is actually a question way back when I had this this group call in with them, no? Ang, uh, this is coming from Jason Malay Balay. Ang question niya kasi before, which applicable siya now is, is it wise to somehow put the emergency funds sa bond fund or sa money market na, na, na fund since yung holding period nila sandali lang at the same time, conservative rin siya. So hindi talaga siya risky. It's really more of like protection lang or like, uh, you know, at least man lang tumutubo yes. konti yung emergency fund. So in your own uh, perspective, is it wise to do that? Yeah, so let me give you a trick. No? We actually have a mutual fund, a money market fund right now na walang holding period. So it's the Ayala, the ALFM money market fund. So you can, you can search for it sa, sa First Metro, sa FundSmart pa din. So I believe... ALFM MMF yung ano niya yung fund code niya medyo mahaba ah, naman <laughs> ALFM uh, parang ALFM money market fund so ALM, ALFM MMF yan so yun we really really we really made it na wala siyang uh, tawag doon holding period so that you, it can really act as sort of quasi bank for you na mas malaki ang, ang savings, ang interest rates in a way kumpara sa typical savings account. So, the only thing you have to contend with is the clearing which takes about one, two, two or three working days lang naman. But other than that, yon pwede talaga siya. So, that's a good idea. Pero wag naman siguro lahat ng emergency funds. So, still leave some for the really, really... Uh, sudden emergencies. Pero a bulk of your, ano, maybe 60-70% of your emergency funds, pwede mo yan ilagay doon. At least it yeah. will earn a little more. Yun talaga yung goal. So, ALF, M, 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 F. Walang holding period yan. Nice. Uh, that's nice. You know, yeah. ang, ang advice ko rin kasi dati sa kanila is that, yes, you can somehow put it in time deposits. Yung kasing question talaga time deposit. But since we also have the money market fund, pwede naman, uh, same thing with with what you said. A portion of it, not everything, but a portion of it, because you will never know. Kaya nga siya tinatawag na emergency funds. Eh. So mm. You will never know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next question. What's the basis of the management fee? So kanina may nakita tayo na mga one percent per okay. annum. Is yeah. it coming from the capital? Coming from the gains? Or how the how paano siya? Anong computation niya? Okay, good. Uh, that's actually a very, very good question. No? So, on the basis ng management fee, when it comes to mutual funds, kasi, meron tayong tinatawag na actively managed fund and passively managed fund. So, yung passively managed, those are the mutual funds that usually just track uh, a benchmark or an index. So, pag sinabi nating track, yung ginagaya lang niya. Diba? Katulad ng index fund. Ang index fund, ginagaya lang Gaya. yan ang PSEI. So, on the part of the fund manager, technically, hindi niya kailangan mag-isip. Taga-execute lang siya. So, hindi niya iisipin ano ba bibilin ko, ano ba, hindi na niya yun aaralin, which is better. Ganito, 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 ganito. So, walang ganong aspect. Um, what happens lang is uh, they just follow whatever is the composition of the PSEI. And so, yung management fee sa mga ganyang klaseng funds, usually, mas maliit. I believe ang management fee ng mga index funds dyan sa FundSmart is around 1% lang or so per annum. Yung mga index funds, 1%. By the way, pare-pareho lang lagi yung management fee. So, whether you buy it from us or you buy it straight from the company, the management fee will always remain the same ang nawawala sa amin yung entry fee or yung sales load. Uh, anyway, those are the actively managed funds. 
Pagka naman kasi pas, uh, uh, passively manage, pagka kasi actively manage funds, like my example earlier, the goal of the fund manager is to outperform the index. And so, since he wants to outperform, he has to look for opportunities that will give him the opportunity to post better returns than, than the index itself. And so, he does a lot more studying, diba? a lot more research. So, mas mataas ang, ang ano. Kasi mas malaki ang trabaho. Mas mahirap ang trabaho. Kaya pagka makikita ninyo yung mga equity fund lang, pero hindi index fund, nasa 2%, 2.5%, or maybe even sometimes 3%, depending on how active the fund is. So, yun yung rason kung bakit nagbabari ang management fee. It depends on the level of work that is expected from the fund manager of that mutual fund. Okay. So, yung, yung, yung percentage nila, saan nila kukunin yun? Sa profits? Uh, ano no, that's decision? from the no, uh, assets under management. So, kung hmm. magkano talaga yung fund? So, why? if they're managing 1 billion pesos na pera, they will take uh, 1% of that. That's their, right. that's their fee. Alright, got it. Sige, eto, uh, another question would be, do you have or is there like a proper diversification na a portion of your money when you start investing is goes to stocks and then how much percentage should go to, uh, should go to funds? Meron bang ganun or depende pa rin sa investor? Uh, depende, although may, may, mga, may mga recommendations yung mga experts na 100 minus your age should be your allocation in stocks and then uh, the rest would be allocated in funds or in bonds and yan, in equity. So, okay, 100 or yung iba kasi ginagamit nila 120 kasi nga parang the argument is that um, since mas mahaba naman yung life expectancy nowadays, you can take on more risk. So, kawari, ako, I'm, <laughs> I'm 20 years old. Right? <laughs> say I'm <laughs> so, let's say I'm 20 years old. <laughs> so, let's say I'm 20 years old. Uh, so, 100 minus 20 equals 80. So, that means um, I should invest 80% of my money in stocks and 20% in bonds. Parang ganun. Because, ang rationale dun is that uh, since I'm younger, I can afford to take more risk kasi nga, uh, I can, I'm still going to work pa naman. I'm going to earn an income. So, I'm not going to be as dependent on my investments pa as of now. Diba? Whatever losses are there, pwedeng maging paper loss lang siya kasi ideally, hindi ko naman siya kukunin. Kasi nga, dapat meron na kong source of income. Na yun yung pang-emergency ko, pang-day-to-day -day living. So, nandyan lang talaga yung investment. So, habang tumatanda ako, pag naging 30 years old na ako, ibig sabihin, 100 minus 30, dapat i-rebalance ko yung portfolio ko. Based na 80% nasa stocks, magiging 70% na lang and 30% na yung bonds. And ang bonds kasi, fixed income. Diba? Nagbibigay sila ng interest. So, yun na yung recurring income na papasok sa iyo. And habang tumatanda ako, pag magre-retire na ako, mas importante na sa akin yung merong recurring income. Kasi magre-retire na ako, wala na akong salary na matatanggap. So, pag 70 years old na ako, uh, pwedeng, ano na lang, tawag doon, uh, 70% na sa bonds, 30% na lang sa stocks. Kasi I have less and less time to wait for the stock market to recover pa. Parang ganon. Kasi yung life expectancy ko, umiiksi na din. So, may ganong, may, may mga ganon. And those are coming from experts. I think na si Warren Buffett ba or si Benjamin Graham yung nag ano na. I'm not sure lang. Pero yun, pwede nating i-employ yun. And it makes a lot of sense naman. The younger we are, the more we can take risks. The older we are, the less we can take risks because uh, yun nga, we are now depending on our investments as our source of income. Hmm. Makes Ganun sense. Siya. Mm -mm. Makes sense. Makes uh -oh. Alright. Sige. Actually, nasagot mo na lahat yung questions. No? 
Uh, all right. Siguro last question coming from me personally. Okay. Mm, mm. So, so uh, as mentioned kanina, most of the beginners, when we want to start investing, pero hindi pa natin alam yung uh, how do we choose stocks. So that's the reason why we just go with the mutual fund. And sa ngayon, since we have this product called VUL, uh, sometimes do na lang, di ba? Insurance, medical benefits, mm. and then you have your VUL. And um, sometimes kasi one, one of the things that the financial advisors or insurance agents sometimes fail to mention is that kung sino ba yung fund manager ng, ng partner nila as, in, as an insurance company. Mm. Yeah, sometimes they forget. So in your own, ano, in your own opinion, how do we study, how do we know if the fund fund manager is good or itong mutual fund company is good? Meron bang basis na gano'n? Like, pag ito yung number niya, parang, oy, mag-iingat ka dyan. Pero pag ganito yung performance niya, okay yan. Meron bang gano'n? Um, usually kasi, even in the profile page kanina na pinakita ko, uh, usually kasi, ang, uh, or all the time, a mutual fund is is compared against each mark. So that is usually one of the best ways to measure the skill of a of a fund manager. No. So kware, yung yung isang equity fund ang benchmark niya PSEI. So pag na outperform niya si PSEI, that means magaling yung fund manager kasi nagawa niya yung objective ng fund. Pero pag nakita mo na kumita si PSEI ng 15%, tapos ang fund ang fund mo kumita ng 12%. That's nag underperform siya. So that's not good. So that means uh yun, there there must have been something that went wrong, no? For for the fund manager to outperform uh, to underperform the the index. Uh ganun. So so usually kasi sa sa insurance, I believe dapat naka-state yan dun sa parang policy talaga. Kung sino yung magiging fund manager. So I'm not sure lang how detailed they get when it comes to the details of fund manager or the or the underlying mutual fund that will be linked to your VUL. Pero mm-hmm. dapat may konting usually kasi may historical performance din dapat yan aside from the projections that they give you. Uh, kaya nga yung iba ang ginagawa, ano na lang, parang they just they just buy the term insurance. And then they just invest on their own for the investment side, the equity side. So parang medyo pwedeng ganun din yung ginagawa ng iba. Para mas malinaw para sa tao yung mutual fund na pinag i niya. So that's one strategy pero it depends naman kasi ang, ang isa namang advantage ng mutual funds din, ay ng VULs, yun, they give you access to other mutual funds that may not be easily accessible for, for all of us. So yun yun pero tingnan nilang talaga yung benchmark. It's always compared against a benchmark. So parang kahit simple study na lang kung sakaling wala dun sa policy ninyo yung benchmark na yon, tingnan mo na lang ano ba yung binibigay kasi talaga mo i-state naman diyan equity fund yung pag-iinvesta ng BUL mo. So tingnan mo na lang yung historical ng equity fund na yon, compare mo against sa performance ng PSEI. You can do it manually naman in case wala siya wala doon sa policy you can do it manually just go to the charting sections of first metro Plus you can look at the per, the returns of the PSEI and then if ma underperform siya yan you you might want to consider something else or just buying term kung na outperform naman niya then that means the fund manager of that mutual fund is good and so you you might probably be able to continue lang with that fund manager para noon all right Cool. So we're actually we're parang nasagot na lahat ng mga questions. Uh, a lot of them are saying thank you, Sir Robbie, and they learned a lot, which is that's good. <laughs> thank natutunan. you, thank you. Okay. So, boss, before we end, is there anything you wanna final words? No final words. Ah, yeah. Ah, okay. So yeah. So again, thank you, thank you, Sir, no? and thank you everyone for for. Uh, welcoming me, no, for for taking the time to to listen to to some of my 
my thoughts about uh, the stock market. No? So hopefully lang, as always, no? hopefully I was able to impart some wisdom. I hope to have made traversing the stock market a bit easier for you, uh, allowing you to make uh, better informed decisions. No? And uh, I hope it works out for you. Pero yun, in case you need anything naman, uh, you can always contact me, uh, Facebook or Viber. Uh, feel free na lang, sir, no, kung sakali, if they ask. No, feel free to send my Viber number na lang, my, my sure. phone number uh, to them. Uh, pero yun, so sana madami kayo natutunan. No? Uh, uh, I really wanted to make this as extensive as possible while still keeping things simple. Because I believe na every Filipino should really have the opportunity to learn about this. Hindi siya dapat selective lang. Dapat lahat natututunan to. So, hopefully, yun yung nagawa ko para sa inyo. Again, thank you for, for welcoming me. Thank you for giving me this opportunity, sir. And uh, I hope to see you around, guys, uh, out there. No? See, you, see you out there. And we're in a brisa na. So, social distancing pa din. Pero feel free to visit us there. Uh, when things settle down. So, thank right. you. Thank you. Sige. So, guys, uh, let's just give love na lang kay Sir Robby virtually. Uh, hindi, hindi niya makita yung comment section because we're in the group. <laughs> but maraming nag-like, maraming nag, nag, ano, yung heart icon. So, again, <laughs> Robby, thank you so much no, for the four sessions that we have been together. No? Uh, so again, for the information of everybody, na bago lang ng join sa course. Actually, it was supposed to be one session, pero gusto ni Robbie to to have a lot of sessions to talk para mas detailed ng ating understanding about mutual funds, stock market, and in order for us to make informative decision when it comes to investing. So ganon, ganon siya ka ano ba? Ka passionate about educating <laughs> us about financials, no? So you know, uh, no amounts of thank you can can ano ba can compensate everything that we have learned <laughs> no it's okay it's okay pleasure <laughs> always a pleasure stay calm okay oh, grabe no <laughs> <laughs> okay sige yeah. so boss maraming salamat ulit at okay. sana magkita tayo personally ulit uh, yeah. pag wala na tong wala na tong mga quarantine quarantine all right yeah. sige okay. so bye bye maraming bye-bye. salamat ulit good night guys Bro, bye-bye.